So this morning we're going to look at a Bible verse. Our Bible reading is one verse this morning. And it's taken from Isaiah chapter 41, verse 13. And it says, For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. So how was it for you? How was it? Did you get what you asked for? All that preparation that took place, all that shopping, all that cooking, all that wrapping, all over for another year. Soon the tree decorations will all be taken down, won't they? Packed away, put in the loft for another year. And how was 2023 for you? Did anything big happen? Or was it just another average year that rolled along? Perhaps like me, you did something for the very first time this year. Finally, I went to see a cricket match at Trent Bridge, something that I have never, ever done before, despite living in Nottingham for most of my life. We saw England play Ireland. Unfortunately, it wasn't the England A team, but, you know, never mind. Some years are bigger than others, aren't they? For us, 2023 was quite a big year. Thomas, our son, took his GCSEs, left school, started sixth form. His football team finished, and that got replaced by rugby. We weren't expecting to be a rugby-playing family this time last year, I can tell you. Davey's quite pleased about it, though. In March, we celebrated our 20th wedding anniversary. And just like many of you this year, I imagine, we've celebrated family events, family weddings, and we've also lost members of our family. We had great excitement in November when some really dear friends from Australia came to visit us. And then also, we've had some really serious health issues and concerns in our family as well. So it's been a real mix of celebration and challenge, which I think probably most years are, really. So what about our verse? Well, in November 2019, I wrote some thoughts down on this verse, and I don't think I ever did anything with it. And if I did do anything with it in church, I'm really hoping that nobody remembers, but there we are. So I just wanted to share with you this morning, just very quickly, some thoughts on this verse. So a tiny bit of background, first of all. Isaiah was what's called a prophet. And these were men and women that God gave special messages to, to pass on to his people. They were kind of special delivery service that God liked to use to communicate with his people. Isaiah lived in Jerusalem in the 8th century BC. And we're told that he was married and at least two sons are mentioned by name in the book. And he prophesied, he passed on these messages for over 40 years. That's what he did. And the chapter our verse today comes from is from a section which, start, which starts at chapter 40 and goes through to chapter 55. And it mainly contains comfort and encouragement for God's people who were going through a particularly difficult time at that point. They'd been taken, they'd been defeated again and taken off to live in exile, to live away from their homes. And these books, these chapters of Isaiah are so full of hope and encouragement that they're known as the book of the consolation of Israel. And it speaks so powerfully of God's rescue that it's said to apply to much more than just that situation then in the 8th century BC. But it can also speak to us now of what God is doing and will do. So what did I write back in 2019? Well, the first thing that jumped out at me is the phrase, I am. God is saying, I am the Lord your God. And it just reminded me of all those times in Exodus, and we've looked at that recently, haven't we? All those times in Exodus where God is saying, I am who I am. There is no other God. And so we know here who 
we're dealing with. So he is, I am. But then he goes on to say that he is the Lord, your God. And this made me think of how there is only one Lord. I am the Lord. He is the Lord of the whole universe. And yet, completely personal as well. As we know, you know, your can be plural, can't it? Your God. But also, your God. Your God. And he takes hold. That jumped out at me. And it made me think of how active God is. And I don't know what the correct verb is, but it's not that, you know, it's not that he has taken hold or that he will take hold in the future. I think it's more, I don't know if it's present continuous, but it makes me think of that ongoing now thing. He takes hold. It's an ongoing everyday thing. You know, God is a God who intervenes. He's not someone who created the world, set things going, and is just afar watching. He's involved every minute of every day. He's involved in my life, and he's involved in your life too. And you know, to me, it's an image of commitment, of reassurance, of strength, of comfort, of security and intimacy. And it reminded me of a story that my mum told me recently. My parents have often taken Thomas away on trips, you know, camping or in the caravan or whatever. And when he was quite small, he took him, they took him away to London with his cousin. And when they came back, my mum told me, she was just telling me all about, you know, where they'd been and what they'd seen and everything. And she just told me this one little story which stuck with me. And they were on a bus in central London and they were getting ready. It was nearly time to get off. And so they stood up and they moved, you know, towards the doors, ready to get off. And Thomas was stood in front of her next to my dad. And the bus, you know, it slows down, doesn't it? It's coming in to stop. It slowed down. And Thomas looked out And he could just see the crowds packing the pavement. You know what central London in summer is like. So to him, he would have just looked out and seen this sea of giants. And as the bus came slowly to a stop and the doors began to open, my mum just saw Thomas slip his hand into my dad's, ready for that moment when they got off. And it just made me think of that, the comfort, the security, the reassurance of holding someone's hand who's bigger than you. So God takes hold of our right hand. And it's that picture of guidance and of us submitting to that guidance too. You know, when someone's holding your hand, you can't wander off, can you? You can't go off and do it your own way when you're holding someone's hand And you know, to be able to take someone's hand or for someone to take your hand, you have to be really close to them, don't you? You know, as much as I love Davy, he stood at the back of the church at the moment, I can't take his hand and he can't take mine. But if I'm stood right next to him, I can. And so this image of God taking our hand says to me that he's right by us. He's right next to us. He's close enough to take our hand. And next it says God says. Again, he's being active. He's doing something. He says. And it's just this reminder that God is a God who speaks. And I know lots of these things might be really... Or you might say to me, yeah, Jane, I know that. It's really obvious. Obviously, God speaks. But do we really live in expectation day by day of hearing from God? Do we remember day by day that he might want to say something to us? Are we open to hearing that? And the thing is, you know, when you're expecting something, you're much more likely to notice it. 
You know, if you go to, I don't know, say in church this morning, if you think, oh, so-and-so might be there today and I need to speak to them, you're on the lookout for them, aren't you? You're going to notice them because you're sort of primed to. It's in your mind. You're waiting almost. And so if we live with the expectation that God wants to speak to us, it's going to be easier for us to notice it, to pick up on it, to be aware of it. And when he does speak to us, of course, the challenge is, are we willing to be obedient to what it is he's asking us to do? If he's asking us to do. Not every time he speaks to us does he ask us to do something. But if and when he does, are we willing to be obedient to what he's saying? And he says to you, and again, this reminder that we can have this personal, close, active relationship with God through Jesus. He says to you, and as a, a tiny aside here, a couple of months ago, I heard, I heard the gospel explained in such a great, easy to remember way, the gospel, the good news of Jesus. And you might have heard this before, but this was the first time I'd heard it. And it was this, God made it, we broke it, Jesus is fixing it. And to me, I thought that was such a great summary of this gospel. And it's so, you know, we need to be ready, don't we? When people talk to us and ask us, why are you a Christian? What is it that you believe? What is it? How, you know, explain to me the whole thing. You know, I doubt very much they're going to sit down for two hours and let you talk at length, as much as you'd like that, Graham. Um, You know, I don't think... I don't think they necessarily would. Uh, You know, we may not have that long. And people need to be able to understand, don't they? We need to be able to clearly communicate with them. And I just thought that was brilliant. I'm going to try. I've got it on my fridge, actually. I'm going to try and memorize that, and I'm going to try and use it. God made it. We broke it. Jesus is fixing it. And that applies to the world. God made the world. God made the universe. And boy, are we breaking the world at the moment? And when Jesus comes back, there's going to be restoration. There will be a new heaven and a new earth. Relationships. You know, God made us, and God made us to be in relationship with each other. And boy, do we break relationships. And Jesus can fix, heal, restore, and redeem those relationships. And ultimately, our relationship with God We broke our relationship with God. Jesus fixed it once and for all on the cross when he died so we could have our sins forgiven, be accepted by God. And that's an ongoing, yes, it happened at a point in history, but that's an ongoing thing, isn't it? As we mess up, fail, break things all the time. But every day we can come back to Jesus and have that relationship fixed further and restored further. So that's just a great thing. God made it. We broke it. Jesus is fixing it. And the invitation to respond, so this guy was saying that I was listening to, is as easy as ABC. And it is no, not the Jackson 5. No. That's always a good answer, but not in this instance. Admit you broke it. Believe Jesus will fix it. Commit now to following him. So admit you broke it. Admit where you've gone wrong, what you've done wrong. Believe what Jesus did on the cross for you and commit now to following him. It's just such a great way of simply explaining the gospel to somebody. And maybe for you this morning, that is an opportunity to take that first step of following Jesus, of admitting you've made mistakes, believing Jesus has fixed it, And deciding today, 31st of December, 2023, that this is going to be the start of your relationship with him. And if that's you, I would love to speak to you afterwards or any other of the leaders here would be, you know, would be delighted to speak to you or perhaps speak to the person you came with. I'll leave that with you. So back to our verse and the last two bits. God says to us, do not fear. Easy, eh? (laughs) 
but we can trust God. We can trust God with all the things we're worried about, all the things we're fearful of. We can trust God. And we've got fears, haven't we? I know I have. When I look out and think of next year, yeah, there are things I'm fearful of. There are people I know waiting for important health results that are going to have a massive implication depending which, ways it, which way it goes. There are people I know in serious financial issues. There are people, you know, we can, we can go odd, can't we? We all, we all have this. And there are things for ourselves as well. But we can trust God. And why can we trust him? Because he promises, I will help you. And we know God does what he says he will. We know that. We can look back, can't we, over this past year, over previous years, and we can see time and time again where God has done what he said he would, has been faithful to us. And no, he's not going to grant us all our wishes. He's not a magical genie. But then I'm not living in a Disney film. But God is trustworthy. And whatever we face this coming year and every year after that, we can trust him. He says to you this morning, this New Year's Eve, as we stand on this threshold of a brand new year, he says to you, I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. And, you know, you may not feel like you've got great faith today. We don't often, do we? We don't often feel like that. But let me tell you, we have faith in a great God. And we can't know what 2024 holds. We don't know. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, never mind the rest of the year. But we can and do know the one who holds us. And anyway, you can relax. There's still 359 days to next Christmas. We're going to sing now. We're going to sing. We're going to start with, I'm going to trust in God. If you're able, please stand. Stick. 